we speak of freedom and of democracy but these words today do not mean just what they meant some years ago for instance when the word democracy first came into being it did not mean that everybody had the right it meant that there were a few privileged people who had the right and the vast majority of people who did not but through the ages of meaning of the words changed and nobody today will accept that limited meaning and today all the protest movements in the world are because some group or the other feels that those people whether they are black or brown whether they are women or young people are not enjoying their rights which should be there under democracy that is why these protest movements begin and gather strengthen so in india we are trying to evolve a way in which we can change the society of so that little by little those who have been under privileged through the ages are able to be equal equal citizens firstly i think this is necessary for human dignity for democracy for freedom but apart from that from the very practical point of view it is equally important because if it does not happen then there will be tension and nobody will be able to prosper and will not have the kind of stable society in which there can be economic progress india has in the past years progressed a great deal from independence right up to 2010 our progress was quite spectacular in 1962 we had a conflict on our borders with china and our attention was diverted from development to defense and a lot of money which should have been used for very essential roads schools and other items was used to strengthen our army because up till then we had just now given a single thought to the defense of the country in 1965 we had another conflict this time with pakistan and we had barely recovered from this heavy expenditure we had terrible drought for 3 years we it hardly rained and suddenly we were faced with near famine conditions but it speaks of the courage and endurance of the people and their will to cooperate that even though the situation was so dark we were able to prevent death through famine and are grateful for the help that we received but of course the situation is never so simple and we now have a new sense of security our agricultural production as i said is very good formerly we were paying attention merely to that people who would eat now we are able to do research in other farm projects which are called cash crops in industry also our productions has trebled the number of children going to school is now very much greater about 180 million our experience has been that every problem solved means a set of new problems sometimes the same in different shape and sometimes quite different one now because education has expanded and industry has not kept pace we have a very serious problem of what we call the educated unemployed young people with degree and not enough jobs for them some of the fault is of our education because it is not it is of such a general nature that our young people are not really prepared to face the challenges of the contemporary world and also most of them would like to have a secure job whereas gradually they must be much more resourceful take initiative and try to find make opportunities and openings for themselves today we sometimes have many areas where there is shortage of teachers of doctors and even of engineers and at the same time there are engineers doctors and teachers who are unemployed because many of our young people do do not want to go to the villages or to the mountains or to the forest areas so many conflicting situations have existed but i have doubt that it is a part of the phase of development through which we have to go and just as we have been able to solve other problems these problems will also be solved so far as employment is concerned we have what we call cash programs that is we give top priority to certain schemes they are not going to employ everybody but even if it makes a small dent in the number of unemployed we feel something has been achieved so india is going ahead in every direction our last elections have given country a new sense of unity a new sense of cohesion and a new direction what was extraordinary about these elections was not that a political party won a big majority that but 
that the ordinary people people who had never bothered about politics people who had not voted sometime in earlier elections took this as their campaign we had many young people who worked all day in factory or in office or somewhere else and who gave us their might madam i rise to support the bill which seeks to include certain tribal communities in the list of scheduled tribes some members here have demanded the inclusion of certain tribes from karnataka in the list of scheduled tribes my party and myself support that demand the honorable minister has said in the statement of objects and reasons that the state government of jammu and kashmir had been making demands for a long time for the inclusion of these four tribal communities as mentioned in the bill but the central government has accepted their demand after a long time it is not the questions of four tribal communities of jammu and kashmir alone we have many tribal communities in maharashtra madhya pradesh and odisha who have not yet found a place in the list of scheduled tribes even after 65 years of independence as a result they have been deprived of various benefits conferred upon them under the constitution we feel that such tribals of the set states should also be included in the list of scheduled tribes so that they can also enjoy the various benefits like other tribals in the country madam it is not the question of conferring economic benefits alone upon the tribals we shall have to see that their languages education and cultures are protected properly we have noticed that the languages of many tribal communities living in our country have not been developed fully their cultures also have not been developed fully consequently the cultures of such tribals are almost on the point of extinction naturally the tribals have become very much concerned with the preservation of their culture we find serious discontent among the tribals of on account of this the imperialist powers and secessionist forces are taking advantage of this kind of discontent among the tribals i come from the northeastern region there the tribals have discontent due to non preservation of their languages and cultures the imperialist powers are taking advantage of their discontent and inciting them to succeed the from india for such secessionist tendencies among the tribals of the policy of the government of india on tribals is responsible on the basis of that policy it has not been possible so far as to develop the languages and cultures of the tribals in india the tribals are unable to enjoy the protection given to them under the constitution therefore tribals have started demanding autonomous councils there autonomous councils so that they can preserve their languages cultures and their ancient civilizations my party further feels that such an autonomy to the tribals is not outside the framework of the constitution of india but the tribals have been deprived of their legitimate rights due to 65 years misrule of congress government at the center as a result the imperialist power and secessionist forces are taking full advantage of the growing discontent among tribals in our country in certain states nexalities are also taking advantage of such a discontent among the tribals our home minister had a meeting with the chief ministers of certain states that day before yesterday in order to find out ways and means to curb the activities of the nexalities we do not think that the activities of nexalities can be curbed through military force or police force we can pacify the tribals only by conceding them their legitimate demands tribals are justified in inspiring the discontent if they find that their communities are on the point of extinction madam the tribal problem is very acute in tripura in this old tribal princely state due to the influx of refugees from east pakistan the tribals are now 28% of the total population there the influx of refugees is still on from present bangladesh not only in tripura but also in other parts of north eastern region it is known to all the members in this house that the communist party marxist government established autonomous district council for the tribals in tripura the refugees are entering those areas also which are under the jurisdiction of the autonomous district council the main object behind the movement of refugees in those areas is to turn the tribals into minorities in their own areas and such a movement has been possible due to the policy of the present gover- congress government there